Hi mathematicians, this is Mr. Almeida. I hope you're doing well. We are about to engage in a new uh, venture in that we are going to be looking at equations. We've spent a lot of time with expressions and we are now going to move into equations. So equations are statements that two expressions have the same value. So we know expressions are numbers or numbers with operations. And now we're saying that one expression is going to have the exact same value as the other. So we are going to uh, hear this word solve when it comes to equations. And solve means to find a value that makes an equation true. Or, in the case, um, to prove that there is no solution. Okay. So in sixth grade uh, and in seventh grade, we're, we're going to be focusing mostly on this part. But when you get to upper level math, um, there will be times when you have equations where you're going to have to prove that there is no such solution. OK? So to f solve equations, the goal is to get the variable, which is the letter, by itself on one side of the equation by using inverse operations. And we've talked about inverse operations before. Inverse operations are operations that undo each other. Um, so let's start off with our first, our first equation. In our first example, we're asked to solve x plus the 50 equals 70. So the first thing that I'm going to look for is on which side is the variable? Well, on the left side. I see that this left uh, side has two terms. I have an x and I have 50. What, I, what am I doing right now to my x? That's always the question we want to ask. What am I doing to my variable term? In this case, I am adding 50 to it. Well, if I want to get the variable by itself, I'm going to use inverse operations. And what can I do instead of adding 50 to x? I can subtract 50. But if this expression has the same exact value as this expression, what I do to one expression, or one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side of the equation. So if I'm going to subtract 50 here, I'm going to also going to have to subtract 50 from here. So my next line of work looks like this. x plus 50 minus 50 equals, what is this side? 70, and what do I have to do to this expression? Also subtract 50, OK? And adding 50 and subtracting 50 undo each other. So I'm just going to cross that out, and they undo each other. Now I'm left with x equals, and then what is 70 minus 50? Well, it's 20. And now I have the variable by itself, and I'm being told that it equals a specific value. I'm going to box it. And now I'm going to see if indeed this value does make the equation true. OK? So by, to do that, I'm going to substitute this value of x, being 20, back into the original equation. OK? Once I find a value, I, see if, I have to see if it makes the equation true. So we have to check that. So I'll show my check below. This is my check. And I will literally um, substitute in the value for x being 20 into the original equation. So I have 20. And this is just me substituting the value back into the original equation. Okay, You don't have to use the, um, the parentheses. It just indicates to me that this is the value that I think is going to make the equation true. Um, x is replaced with 20 plus 50 equals 70. Now I look on the left side. Um, how many operations do I have? I only have one. So I'm going to do 20 plus 50. What's 20 plus 50? 70. So the left expression is 70, or the left side of the equation is 70. And the right side. What's 70 worth? 70. Does 70 have the same value as 70? Yes. Place a check mark. So what value makes the equation true? x being 20. Not x being 70. This was just our check. x equals 20. OK? So this is the value that makes the equation true, x equaling 20. 
that was our first example. It was very um, detailed in the direction that we were given. But most of the time, you're going to see just an equation that looks like this. And you're not going to see this word solve. But what you're, in, what you're being asked is to solve this equation. That means to find a value that makes this equation true. Okay. So in, um, most, most, most of the time, you're not going to see the word solve but you're going to see just a regular equation, you should know to solve. OK. In this case, we ask ourselves, which side is the variable on, left or right? We, we see it on the left. Um, how many terms do we have? We have 2, we have 30, and we have x. What are we currently doing to x? Well, let's look to the right of that. There isn't anything that we're doing to x. That means we're going to have to use a property. Use the commutative property to change these two numbers around when it comes to addition. So I can change the order of numbers I'm adding without changing their result. This now becomes x plus 30 equals 50. Now I look at my variable term, and I ask, what am I doing to the variable term? Or what am I doing to the variable? I am adding 30. Well, what do I have to do to get back to x to undo adding 30. I'm going to subtract 30. So I'm going to subtract 30 from this expression, or this side of the equation. And I'm also going to subtract 30 from this side of the equation. Okay. And adding 30 on the left side, adding 30 and subtracting 30 undo each other. And I'm left with x. x equals, now what is 50 minus 30? 20. Okay? So I have x equals 20. It's just a coincidence that both of these are equaling 20. There isn't a pattern here. Okay? But now I'm going to check to see if this value makes the equation true. All right? Remember, my goal was to get the um, variable by itself. It is by itself. And now I'm going to see if this value for x does make the equation true. All right, I'm going to substitute this back into the original equation. My check becomes 30 plus 20. And I only do this to show you that this is the value that I'm substituting in to see if it's true, equals 50. OK, now we have 30 plus 20, which is equal to 50. So this expression is worth 50. Equals, what's the value of this expression? 50 as well. Does 50 have the same value as 50? Yes, it does. Therefore, x does indeed equal 20. OK? So that's for uh, our first two equations. We now move to our final example in this first part. Again, you're not going to see the word solve, but implicitly, the directions are solve this equation so that we find the value for d that makes the equation true or prove that there is no solution. OK? So what are we currently doing to the, um, the variable? Well, right now, we're not doing anything because there's nothing to the right of it. So we're going to have to know that 5d means 5 times d. And around multiplication symbols, we can change the order of the numbers that we are multiplying without changing the result. So now we have d times 5 equals 30. Well, I ask, what are we currently doing to the variable? There is only one term, by the way. So if there's only one term and the variable uh, is, um, is being multiplied or divided by a number, we'll know that there's either multiplication or division. Okay? If you only have one term and you need to find a value for the variable. So we have um, d times 5. What are we currently doing to d? We are multiplying it by 5. To undo that, we are going to divide by 5. And if we do that to this side of the equation, we're also going to divide the right side of the equation by 5 as well. Okay, To multiply and divide by 5 is to undo each other. And we're left with d. d equals, now what is 30 divided by 5? 6. So we think our our solution to this 
is d equals 6, but let's check to see that it actually is. Okay, so we have 5 times Six. So we substitute this back into the original equation. Five times instead of d, we we'll replace it with six, equals 30. And what's five times six? 30. And we're at the equal sign. And what is 30? What's so the value of 30? 30. 30 does, in fact, have the same value as 30. Therefore, d does equal six. So to summarize, what we've done is we first see what we are doing to the variable term. And if we're not doing any operation to that variable term, that is an operation that's to the right, we're going to use properties. Okay? And those properties are going to um, usually involve the commutative property. Uh, it could also involve the distributive property or the associative property. But we're going to use properties. In our equation so far, we only had to use the commutative property. But know that you can have um, at your disposal any property. Step two, perform the inverse operations to get the variable by itself. So in order to get the variable by itself, you're going to perform inverse operations. So if you're adding a number to the variable, you're going to subtract that same number um, from that expression to get back to the variable. Okay. And then uh, step three, once you found what the value for the variable is, and you've gotten it by itself, you're going to check to see if that value that you think is going to make the equation true does in fact make it true by substituting it back into the original equation uh, to see if it makes it true or proves that there isn't a solution. Okay? So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you now know how to solve equations. In our next video, we'll learn some more um, strategies uh, to solve equations when they get a little bit more advanced. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day. Bye, mathematicians.